go down now to uh, to rinkside. Patrick Royce, can you can you uh, put a positive spin on the Wild utterly collapsing in the playoffs? Look behind me here, guys. Look at that beautiful sun after those two oh, days nice. of rain. The well. tulips in our front yard which have been in there for 15 years, popped again overnight. They're beautiful. They're beautiful tulips. <laughs> Coming you know, up next, we talk to the gardener who helped with those tulips spring. and did such a it's, great job. It's spring. It's uh, sun. What the hell? The sun is a metaphor for the wild's bright future. Coming up I next. Think, <laughs> I think this is a real lesson. Oh, and Declan gave me a hint here when I exchanged uh, text with him today. You're just feeling bad, Judd, because you got sucked in. You thought they were. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're just feeling bad because you got sucked in. They I duped you. They were the real deal. Yep. You know, I was yep. just going with the flow. I had no real. Oh, I know. No, I, <laughs> I thought she really liked me, Dad. I thought she really liked me. I thought I was special. I thought yeah. this time was different. <laughs> yeah, right. Pat was Pat was peer pressured into kind of coming to the party. Yeah, oh, that's great! Yeah, Pat, it's a Pat party. got out on the floor. He was doing a little yeah, shitty. Every end. time they pull the goalie, they score a goal. There's got to be some magic going on there. And then, <laughs> wow, uh, that, it, it's it's uh, not it's never good to save your worst game for the elimination game, is it? I mean, that's that's when you you know if you get beat, okay, but you should come out flying, right? You should come out. Fighting for every puck, not just laying down. So, like they did the last couple of once it got to be 2 0. See you later, boys. Nice, nice going. Now we got play, we got player wives chirping at Dean Evison on Twitter. Kelly, really? Kelly, Kelly Talbot. Yeah, it's bad. Well, yeah. It's really ugly this morning. What it's is really Kelly bad. mad at? Well, she's Dean. mad that her husband didn't didn't play before game five. That he was, he was the, I mean, six. I'm, I'm, game or six. game six. Yeah. You know, I, you know, she didn't tweet all of this, but I think it's, Really, that was she basically said, We're gone. That's basically what she said. Oh, really? It okay. in she talked about the next adventure of the Talbot family. How did she defend the 60, 70, 80 foot goal that the let uh, that was the first of the game? Did she uh, was she in favor of that thing? <laughs> I'm know? sure she wasn't. I hope no. not. I mean, the flower could have stopped that one for God's sakes. That's not that's not a bad good way to give them their first one, that's mm -mm. for sure. Yeah, here's the tweet. That so she she chirped. Russo had had quoted Talbot. Talbot basically said, "Yeah, I was pissed off that I wasn't starting, but you know, yeah. whatever." And uh, and and Kelly said, "Well, it was an easy decision for Dean." And then and then she said, <laughs> "I love wives. I love <laughs> social media." Yeah, I, has got, love. Social I got media I got chirped by Byron Buxton's wife this week on Twitter. It's like, come on, really. She, Put a pin uh, in that. We'll come back to that. But oh, she, right. uh, Kelly Talbot tweeted, ride or die. She's, it's a picture with the kids. So proud of Cam Talbot. Home is wherever you are. Excited for, for time with you wherever the next adventure takes us. So I don't, think, right. I don't think the Talbots are coming back to Minnesota. So And, and with the other guy being 37, who's the, who's the goaltender? Je well, Jesper Wallstedt is eventually, but Plenty we don't know if it's next year. There. So let's talk. Yeah, yeah. let's talk Jim about Craig. Kelly and Cam at home. Yeah, right. Next, right. we do a feature on how they're great family to try yeah. and make them happy. What's the name of the Wild? Did they still do the Inside the Wild show or whatever the hell? It Becoming is? Wild. Uh, Becoming yeah, Wild. Be Becoming oh, Wild. Yeah. Absolutely. Put some respect on it. One of my favorite shows. Have any I mean, of those so ever much. had a little negative twist to them? Uh, you know, little yeah. like you know. We go clubbing with Matt Boldy. I wish you wouldn't come home <laughs> drunk so often. Yep. You know, yeah. Any of that. It captures. Really a, it a nice captures a fight. <laughs> He's really a nice guy when he's sober. You know? Wow, is he? <laughs> Coming up next, Matt Foley oh. does 14 yeah. shots after a game. Really impressive. So, okay, here's, here's my deal. Uh, oh, man. Going into this series, mm -hmm. it was very important to keep Fiala because he had a fantastic year offensively. And now he doesn't do much, and Dumba fires in a goal. Is are they going to flip flop? Or are they going to keep Dumba and let then try to trade Fiala because they'll get more? I think both. Think? I, I think both might be gone. They might be. Yeah, I was. Thinking I think the both same might thing. be gone now. Last time they had one of these decisions, they got rid of both of them. So yep. uh, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, that happens. I, I I was thinking the same thing today that uh, they might solve the problem by getting rid of both of them and having some cap room to do some other things. And then let's face it, if they can get a really good draft choice, uh, that would be, uh, that would be, uh, you know, good, 
good to move whichever one gives you the better draft choice, right? And apparently be a pal. So, yeah, I don't know. It's been quite a two weeks, hasn't it? it you, has. have the, uh, you have a basketball team that became the first in history to blow three 10-point leads. They were underdogs. And then you got these guys who were favorites, not solid favorites, but, you know, good, strong three to two favorites. Yep. Who had a 2-1 lead in the series and were playing game four against a team that had none of its defense, right? I mean, half of its defense was missing. And you managed that to me is, you know, that's where it all went bad that you let them win game. You let them win game four. You, you had them on the ropes. They were rattled and they didn't have their players and they beat you. And that's, uh, you know, you went downhill after that. So. Other than that, know. things are great. I mean, the sun is yeah. shining. The tulips are well. blossoming. Yeah, right. really the sun's getting off. <laughs> Twins are getting their asses kicked by the Astros, and then we're, we're back. Oh, yeah. Let's yeah, we didn't even about. talk about that. Yeah. No. no. But anyway, what's uh, we're, it took – I listened to the postgame show, with uh, and Tony came on with, uh, with this Ryan Carter character. Who I'd never heard before because I don't. If Wes isn't on, I turn the volume down. Okay, I like Wes. He once in a while is candid, not as candid as he used to be, but he's uh, once in a while is candid. But it didn't take long for uh, Tony the Pony to get to all the great young players and Carter of all the great young players we have on the way up here in the system. And this is, you know, this is they they're trying to frame this as just building. Yep. Not a team that's in cap crisis. <laughs> not a not a team that's in cap crisis. You know what I will say that Garen accomplished? <clears throat> he got Kaprizov cheap. He got Act cheap. He got you know they they made some contract deals before the start of the season that they got they got bargain rights for. I mean if if Kaprizov had been smart and not signed, uh, they you know. They wouldn't be able to pay him, right? Probably not. Yeah. But I. But the problem now is this, Pat. This was such a. This was such a bad series, and, and coupled with what took place against the Golden Knights last spring, you got to look at more guys now and say, are those core guys to actually winning playoff games? Not Kaprizov; he's great. But I'm. But you know, there's enough guys. Jared Spurgeon. He disappeared. Mm-hmm. The man disappeared. Brodeen was terrible. And if you they say, look well, out, Louis is going to fight you on Jared Spurgeon, but okay. And ahead. Brodeen. He loves Brodeen too. And he's right most of the time. But where were they? Brodeen fl- flopped like a fish last night on that <laughs> power play goal to O'Reilly, who was allowed to stand there unmolested, untouched. And Brodeen is literally doing a snow angel when O'Reilly scores that goal. <laughs> What the hell is that? The, the, so the I was watching on TNT. T, the TNT broadcast was really good last night. And they showed a slow-mo of that whole. It was just a tic-tac-toe game, just a yeah. dissection, right? Yep. And they showed, watch the patience of the Blues waiting for Dumba to drift over here and for Brodeen. Like, they were just setting those guys up to drift into a spot they're not supposed to be in. Those aren't mm-hmm. second-year, 21-year-old players anymore. No. You know, these are veteran defensemen we're talking about. No, Brodeen is, you know, probably... They're considered their best defensive defenseman they've ever had, right? As far as yeah. uh, it's fantastic. You know, get, ordinarily get fantastic. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, what of them? I I proposed that I asked on uh, Twitter last night. Okay, a. Uh, you have a team that uh, lost, set a record for blowing the most fourth quarter leads, but they were underdogs, and then you got this team which blew a 2-1 lead in the series and lost in six games, which is the bigger flop. And it was pretty unanimous that it was the Wild. The, the Wild have passed, surpassed oh. the Wolves in a mere two weeks, which is not easy because yeah. what the Wolves it's did true, though. pretty hard to watch. It's also kind of a – it's it's hard to answer that question without the, the loaded history of all the other Wild flops, too. The, the, this yeah. one's more frustrating well, in part was, because of all the other flops. Well, this was, plus, this was the best team they've ever had. This is the best Minnesota hockey team, for, I thought, anyway, that we've had in the NHL. Uh, you know, the only ones that compare were the 82-83. Uh, probably the 83-84 teams were better than 82, and they both got beat in the uh, – one of them got beat in the second round, the other one got beat in the first round, right? Am I right on that, Judd? 
83-84 got beat by the Oilers in the conference finals. Okay. That was a really good team. But yeah. yeah, but but at least they got beat by a juggernaut. I mean, the Blues are a nice team. They're a good team. Uh-huh. The problem is starting Blues the third. Will, Blues will go Sorry. five against the Avalanche. They'll be out in five. Probably. Because but, the Avalanche have been sitting around scratching themselves here for about four days. Too, you know? Who doesn't? <laughs> Relaxing, getting healthy, you know. Who, who doesn't, if given time? <laughs> you know, Pat, Pat, the incredible thing is this. The more things change, the more things stay the same in, in this vein. There is still going to be, and I've seen it this morning, in this town, the SID rules are still being applied yeah. constantly. Like, stronger I, than ever. Stronger but you and Such you and Such did the SID rules 80 what? Yeah, 80, 83, 84. Yeah. Probably. And those rules are still being, you know, uh, um they're, they're mock ten, people. They're you know. only 10 original. Uh, originally, as the excuses mounted, we had to up it to 15, but there were only 10. Uh, it's incredible. All of these simple rules you can follow. You can write your own SID column. That was the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, was the, uh, that, was great. that was the original motto but well who's spinning it positive today i uh the, the k fan boys in the morning or what what are they doing i already no, got I a know. note that this is a learning lesson that there's <laughs> overreaction that learning that, who's that learning? you don't get upset about this you learn <laughs> well we heard the same thing about the timberwolf so d'angelo russell's gonna learn not to be an idiot I right. don't know. Uh, I mean, that, no, that's exactly yes. Thank you. Know, you. I mean, thank so, you. Dumba's going to learn to show up more than one third of the time or something. I mean, that's, uh, you know, what these guys, this team is not a young team, the, the wild. So they're not, what are they learning? You know, they're I learning. Agree. This. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's just yes. a, it's a disappointment. There's no, yes, yes right. There's no, like the the Timberwolves, and I agree with you on the Timberwolves. It was framed as well. This was, I mean, Memphis. Memphis's star core players are younger than the Timberwolves. Yes, yes, and uh, you know, I mean, <laughs> that was a flat out joke. This was the first one of their. This was the first one in the series that you could. Well, I don't know. The last three, the last four periods, they were outscored eight to one because they got outscored three to one on on in game five too. So. You can't tell me that anybody who walked into that arena on uh, uh, Tuesday night thought that they were going to be saying, oh, well, there, it was a learning experience come Friday morning, right? Yeah, Nobody, exactly. You had them at home. You had them at home. You were healthier than them. And, uh, you know, you you would, you, you know, you'd show them that you – Probably, you know, you're 2-2 two, two after 2, and then you give up 3 to Terrace. Kaprizov plays the game of his life, and you still manage to get beat 5-2. to two. I, Yeah, so you got to look around and say, oh, oh, you know what? A lot of sports, you can make a case for regular seasons and stuff, but in hockey, more than any other sport, the only thing that counts is the playoffs because they're all this big mumble of, of, of teams that, you know, this year they got a lot of points, but they're this big jumble of teams. And the only thing that matters is what you do in the postseason. I would, you know, like the Timberwolves, actually, the NBA, the Timberwolves actually making it after a long year, after what? Four years, years and then and yeah. four years, but yeah, twice in 18 years. So uh, it's, a di- it's a different animal. It, the, the NHL is more than any other sport. It's the only time that it counts. Although, as playoffs have expanded, even in baseball and everywhere else, it's now, you know, what what do you do in the postseason everywhere, but more so in hockey, I think, than anywhere. Speaking of the Timberwolves four years ago, I don't know if you guys, you guys probably didn't see this last night, but the uh, the Sixers got smoked by the Heat and eliminated last night. And Jimmy Butler walks mm-hmm. off the court into the tunnel and starts yelling with all the cameras, they picked Tobias Harris over me. They picked <laughs> Tobias Harris over me. <laughs> <laughs> he can Jimmy. agitate, man. Mm. He can agitate. And then Joel Embiid, so they had a nice little embrace, you know, because they still yeah. Embiid and Butler are still are yeah. still buds. And after the game, it, so two things: one, James Harden took two shots in the second half last night. What Just he's completely cooked. And uh, Joel Embiid gets up to the podium, and and they were asking about Jimmy Butler. He says, "I don't, I, honestly, I don't even know why we let him go to begin with." <laughs> <laughs> and he's right. He's probably right. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, it's uh, the NBA playoffs are unbelievable. Dallas and Phoenix are going to game seven. And depending on which arena you play in, the other team wins by 30. Yeah. It's the, basketball is the only sport where home ice, home court still means anything. Basketball is the only sport that still means anything. Hockey, it means nothing. By the way, we there were four uh, four teams fighting for survival last night in the NHL. Mm-hmm. Three of them forced Game Seven. Yep. But, how about that? But yes. one of them had a great learning experience <laughs> yes, to carry they forward. Did. Yes, they did. <laughs> yep. I'm going to call Al Shaver today <laughs> and ask Al if he was watching last night. Because Al, Al could give you a perspective well, on I always have the towel. letting them get away. It's about winning. Oh, yeah. God. Well, they, uh, you know, there's been a lot of years where they tried to build up a, a playoff, you know, that's all about the playoffs or whatever goofy slogans they've had. But this year, this year is different because there were, Genuine expectations. This year is different because it's you know you're 100 and how god many points 103 or five or whatever however many points they scored. Hell, they were charging at the end. It looked like they might catch Colorado for five minutes and then oof. I don't know. Now I love people ripping Dean too. Are we down on Dean now? Oh, Dean had a terrible series. He should be ripped. He didn't make. Oh God, he did not. They did not make any adjustments, and Baruby made a bunch, and some of them were small, but they were smart. And Dean just Dean had his lines, and Dean had his Dean let the players run things, which was great in the season. But yeah, he deserves it. He definitely deserves he did it. look very menacing throughout the six games, though. So I thought I thought I his was, his perplexed face when the Blues would score their fifth goal of each game was always yeah. on point on the national TV broadcast. He, he's got a great WTF face. Yes. Yeah. yeah, he does. I, I saw a couple of those last night. Uh, meanwhile, you mentioned the uh, Twins and the Astros earlier. Uh, what give me what what Mrs. Buxton say? We we shouldn't be uh, mentioning that he never. It's played ridiculous. Before. So first of all. <laughs> You're, who has two thumbs and is a Byron Buxton apologist sycophant? This guy right here, okay? Yes, I've been calling are. him the best player in baseball for two years. Yeah. I think I, I feel like Pat and I were the only ones. Well, I, mean, I don't even remember what your stance was on the $100 million, but I was back up the Brinks truck for guy. I was for it just because what's your option? Is, yeah. Who else are you going to get that's going to make you 20% better, right? Yeah. And so, yeah, listen, all of these, I've been I've been saying these things, tweeting these things. Where has Lindsay Buxton been for three years while I've been showering her husband with praise? And I have one moment of weakness, and I tweeted out the other day, despite not landing on the injured list, he still yeah. managed to miss 37% of the Twins yes, games this yes, season. That's- and that's the one she chose to, to find on Twitter and chirp me so. I have said that this is maybe his most disturbing, even as great as he's been when he's played. The most disturbing time for missing games has been this year because he hasn't had a real injury. You know, he hasn't had anything that's, you know, it's all this vagueness that there's nothing broken or busted or sprained or tweeted. You know, it's just, yeah, it doesn't feel right today. Stepped on first base or off. The whole object of the game is to get the first base. If he's going to get hurt stepping on first base, he's really in trouble, right? It's a <laughs> yeah. It's a, yeah, it's not uh, moving what, anywhere. It's not. <laughs> what a three-game ass kicking, though. Yes. I mean, Houston is really good. They're better They're good. than I thought they were. And this Pagan is – he got – something happened to him at the end of the game yesterday. He left for five minutes, but – you know, they don't miss Curry. When you don't miss Carlos Correa, you got a pretty good team, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, uh, they, yeah, they, I mean, it was just – what do you think? Of, were you there early yesterday, Declan? Yeah, I was there for five okay. hours. I was there from how are 12 your ears, to... uh, How were your ears after Cody Stashak's performance? Oh, my ear, my, my, I, I think I was picked ringing. up on the Bally Sports feed, ripping him from, from the fourth inning, allowing six runs on, on coming out of the bullpen. Just he was terrible. It. Forgot I Nick think... Gordon made, made him, was better, for God's sakes. Like, yeah. Cody Stashak was horrible. Four pitches, three rocket doubles. I mean, oh, just God. I'll tell you what, though, the ball is dead. The ball is dead. I mean, it's not BS. Polanco was sure he got that ball to right field. You know, he yeah. was run jogging out of the. Out okay, of the, why would Santiago, Major League Baseball? Why would you deaden the ball if you're Major they, League Baseball? They want to. They want people to change their approach. They want. That's moving runners and double. Yeah, they don't want home, home runs now. 
Do, they don't want did it you to be see just a bunch of guys sitting there waiting to hit home runs. That's what do, I think. The, it's 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 there. I have seen more guys this year shake their head when the ball doesn't. Sanchez two nights ago. I mean, he killed that ball to left center and it didn't go out. There's and, a great great one I saw a couple of days ago, which, which is the accusation now is that they are putting a livelier ball in play for nationally televised games and the dead <laughs> ball in play for the rest yeah. of the game. There's a pop up to short. Wait a second. Yeah, there yeah. it goes. <laughs> The Yankees are. <laughs> it's Supposedly, a uh, All right, last, week, judge. last week, yep. Cody Bellinger hit a ball to center field in Dodger Stadium, which has really pretty much a, become a bad box. And the, the velocity, the, the altitude, the whole damn thing was like 15 rows deep, and the guy caught it in center field, and everybody was, even the pitcher was going. The cameraman was showing the outfield, Pat. Huh? The camera panned right past the past the guy, and it showed the outfield. And then they had to come back and show the team jogging off the, the field because he had caught the ball, and the camera was so sure it, it was a, a home run. They didn't yeah. show the guy catching that the ball. A, yeah, it was, I guess. It was so, awesome. I mean, yeah, well, Polanco, who's, you know, not a jogger when he hits one on the ball to right field that, Ended up going off the wall for a double, and he yeah. and it bounced one of those that bounced ninety feet back in, and it's a triple if he's running. Uh, but he thought for sure it was beyond that little thing, eight rows back there, and it didn't go out. So, I you, you can always count on baseball to make the wrong decision. Don't worry about yeah. it. Yep. Whatever it is, whatever <laughs> they think up, they will screw up. We can yeah, you know, we can count on that. Yep. By the All way, right, Pat. They, they only announced. They allegedly put attend the attendance, the tickets sold for the two games in the attendance after because they only announced one attendance and it was sixteen thousand eight hundred or something. Mm. Nice day too. I mean, you'd had a storm. No, Declan. Before, but it was a nice day. No, there was not sixteen thousand. Not even close to sixteen thousand. Yes, sir. But that was day. counting Wednesday night people that didn't come back. But uh, third, we're twenty third in the league. What we passed Cincinnati the other day. Uh, in, in average attendance. So that's good. That's good. Since All right, gentlemen. Red, well, I got red legs. Don't worry. Don't worry. We've learned a lot from this. Judge learned a lot. Judge yeah. learned a lot. Never trust anybody again. Exactly. <laughs> you know what? Trust. My good faith is now gone. Like yeah. all of the harmonious things I felt, mm -hmm. it's done now. Now I'm, I'm curious really going to see be negative. where this puts Judd's Vikings uh, when we pick the schedule today on oh. Purple Daily. He's just, it's going to be four wins for the Vikings. And this is going to drastically alter Judd's. This was such a rattling to Judd. He's now taking an official position on the hereafter, too. You know, so he's, <laughs> skepticism is raining now, man. <laughs> Love it. All right, Pat, All right, enjoy yeah. your weekend. We'll talk next yeah. week. Bye, Pat. All right, that's uh, Rappin' with Royce, presented by Federated Mutual Insurance Company. Federated is here to help businesses. <laughs> I don't know if they can help hockey teams, but they can help businesses with risk management. They've got all sorts of resources, tools, people. Check them out, federatedinsurance.com, where it's our business to protect yours.